I think Gunshine itself is an amazing story because we're a rock and roll band that are still playing and having a great time doing it in Wyoming, where rock and roll is not the predominant um, musical choice of most of the people that live here. Our goal as a band is to entertain the crowd and keep them there. And when they leave, they know they're coming back to see a gunshot show again when we're back around. Hi, I'm Stacy Sams and I'm here with Gunshy here at the Asher building. They're from Buffalo, Wyoming, and we're going to have a little sit-down chat with them about what they're all about and hear them perform. So let's see and hear a little gunshy in action.
And now, let's meet with Paul Beals, Charlie Francipane, and Scott and Rachel McCoy. In other words, Gunshy. I'm Scott McCoy, I'm the drummer for Gunshy. I'm Paul Beals, and I'm the bass player for Gunshy. My name is Charles Francipane, lead guitar player of Gunshy. Rachel McCoy, lead singer extraordinaire for Gunshy. All right, now here we are again with Gunshy again. Will you guys just kind of tell me how long you all have been playing together? How long have we been playing together? Five years together. Four with Paul. Yeah, yeah they've been about five years. Yeah. Together longer. Now, will you kind of just walk me through the process of getting everybody together? It took a while. I met Rachel. She was at work, and I was walking past her job, and she came running out, running out, and just stopped me like a linebacker in the middle of the street. <laughs> And, and, she's, and she's like, I need to start a band with you. Now, I've, do, I've seen women get very creative in ways to try to pick me up, but this was new. <laughs> this was all new. And I, you know, she, and I realized through the course of the conversation that she was married and that she was maybe serious. So um, I have heard her sing. We did a song together, and she's laughing. We did a song together, and I remembered you, and I thought about it, and I was doing nothing, and that's how we, we started it with a jam is how it started. And well, you married him. And we actually tried to get something going with uh, that other guy, that other guitar player, and he didn't work out very well at all. What was his name? See, I don't, this is the story that I don't know. I don't remember him. We, 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 he and I started, we wanted to play some music, so we started looking for people to play music with us. And yeah, there was a, a friend of mine whose husband played guitar. And the thing about him is that we get him over to our house and all he keeps doing is playing Jimi Hendrix covers over and over, just different ones over and over, telling us, telling us how good he is and how much he knows how to play guitar and how we have to play these covers. And we're just both kind of like, what the heck did we get ourselves into? He came over once. We never, that's, that's when I accosted him out in the middle of the street, well, yeah. How long after you uh, asked, asked me to join uh, a band you, until we actually started? It's been a time, it's been a little time because mm -hmm. I, I was worried about joining, like they're married, it's like the Partridge family, like I'd be joining the Partridge family type <laughs> thing. So I was a little worried and, and about that whole thing and their relationship, it actually ended up working out very well for the last five years. You need to eat, Marsha, you're getting cranky. I, <laughs> what was the thing that made you realize, no, what was that defining moment in your life that made you realize I want to start getting into music. Well, well, for me, I've been playing guitar since I was 13. And I grew up, I'm a child of the 60s and early 70s. Love child. And I, and, I, and I grew up in Southern California, so I was fortunate that I was able to see a lot of the bands, you know, at that time, like Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin and Cream and, you know, just, just about any band you can think of from that time, I was able to see. And I, you know, I was, so I was influenced by a lot of, a lot of musicians at that time and I've been in bands you know over the years since then and I when I was in I, I never played in a band while I was in Buffalo but I I wanted to you know and it, it was I was sitting at the bar one day and, and Rachel walked in and she sat down and she was talking to the bartender about about playing and that they needed a bass player and I I said well I'm looking to play what kind of music do you play well blues rock I said well Man, that sounds good. She said, well, we need a bass player. I said, well, you know, I haven't played the bass in a while, but actually I was in a band when I was a kid playing bass. And I said, and I've got a bass, so I could play bass. Let's try it. Yeah, and I think what happened, didn't, uh, didn't you two get together before we all four got together? I think we, we did. did. Yeah, and, and jammed a little bit. And we did. I, I thought, oh my gosh. What He's we... kind of the tester. He sees that they, they mesh well because... <laughs> she makes me test her food at restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's meat because he doesn't eat meat. Mm. Not in public. Okay, and then um, you guys had kind of an interesting story of coming up with the idea of gun shy for your band. So how did that come about? 
Because the other names were stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we had some stupid ass names. We had. What was some of them? What racial? You guys are. Uh, Cold, Cold Buffalo. Cold, Cold, Cold Buffalo was one of them. <laughs> Cold Buffalo. <laughs> Cold Buffalo was one of them. I, and I, I actually liked that one. I, I, <laughs> I changed my I mind a lot. Like. Oh, I get, I I get give that from Rachel. List. I changed my life. Cold Buffalo was one. There was another one. <sighs> there was one other one that we kind of liked that, I, to, for the life of me, I can't remember it. Well, I like the McCoys, because that just sounds Western. I, mean, I was going to buy a cowboy hat and everything. The real McCoys. A flannel shirt. The real McCoys. That is who we are, you know. Oh, totally off subject. They spell it differently because they're incognito. It's, it's the, the Polish you know, McCoy. Fool me, the Polish. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So we said so, on gunfight. Was it out of the hat? Is that how we did that? Is that no, it was, you know, we threw, the, yeah. threw these things around. We just threw them around. And we were, I know he was talking to his buddies back east, texting them. Yes. What do you think about this? What do you think? And they were sending suggestions, right. some of which were stupid. They, well, they're from the east. Coast. Others were, <laughs> that's why. Others, they weren't too bad. But, you know, gunshot just kind of stuck because, well, in my mind, I thought we were looking for something that said, you know, we're approachable, but we're tough. And gun shy says that, you know, in my opinion, I thought it worked well. Because one of us are approachable. <laughs> you are, Which anyway. One? It's Paul. Paul. <laughs> when anyone has a problem, we got to go to Paul. Paul, I got a problem. Well, I'm glad you guys went with gun shy because cold buffalo, uh, not so much. <laughs> We stopped the press. We were getting hats, keychains, T-shirts made up of, of cold buffalo. And, yeah, no. and Scott, I think, was the one who just... Um, Said he's not wearing cold buffalo. I'm not, yeah. I'm not wearing cold buffalo underwear. We had special uh, designer <laughs> colors and whatnot. It just didn't work out. We axed the idea. You know, we thought buffalo would be a good idea to use in the name because we were from Buffalo. We were in Buffalo. And I think that's where it came from. But cold buffalo sounds like... Braunschweiger. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like cold lunch meat to me. No thanks. Just kind of tell us a little bit about your original music. What, uh, was it difficult getting you guys to kind of start collaborating and kind of agreeing on the same kind of beats and tones and... No. No. Paul comes up with the ideas. Yeah, well, well, Rachel had a few original songs from her earlier days in the bands that she's been in. And we started playing those. She wanted to do those, and so we worked on those. And uh, and then I I started writing, you know, basically for the band, you know, knowing knowing everybody's abilities and just the sound and how it kind of all gelled. And so, you know, I was I was working on on songs that you know kind of favored Rachel's voice. <laughs> where we are. We've got about, what, 10 originals now? I 10 think. or 12, we've got, yeah. We've got six on the CD, and we've got a few more that we need to record at the moment. Well, and we and had, he keeps writing them. We had the blues tune. We had the basics for that, right. now, just the two of us. Right. We had the part for Shark Tank, mm -hmm. just the two of us. Yeah. It's getting our names on. Yes, they're yeah, all the, See, and I was, and then, what was cool about that was I was able to take the music that those guys had worked on and put lyrics to it and it just worked. Yeah, and then he, he'll bring his stuff when he records it as his guitar. I don't know if the bass is you. Yeah. And then the, the drums are just like a computerized. And he'll send the whole thing to, I'll have him send me two copies. I'll have him send me one with everything and one without the drums. And then I'll mic my drums up if I, I'll, I'll think of some weird thing that goes I think sounds better. I'll re-record it, send it back to him, and then, okay, well, could you do this? Okay, well, then let's just get together. And they all live a half a block from each other, too. Yeah, so it's, it's, all yeah it's pretty cool. Out.
sounds like the two of you do the most songwriting. Is that right? How yeah. about, now do you guys do a little bit of songwriting yourself? Well, no, that's more Paul's thing. Uh, Paul's really good as far as, he'll bring an idea to me and he does not moan and bitch about nothing. He lets me take it, twist it, turn it, flip it upside down and completely revamp it. And it, basically the idea is, this, this is the, the, the brain of the band right here. He makes it happen. We all kind of put out two cents in it. By the time it, we're done with it, it's a completely different, um, it's, it's at these four personalities, four Sometimes. very different, but sometimes. That's what I said. Well, what's nice is these, these guys are more children of the 80s, and so Charlie Charlie played in a band back in New York City for, what, 20, 20 years? It's been about uh, close to 30, yeah. Surrender were, were, was their name, and they had the long name. hair and the spandex. Spandex, the long hair, yeah. teased the hair, the spandex, the with the socks so. shoved down your pants, and, and, and that whole <laughs> And the high-top shoes with high the spandex. High-top shoes, yes. Yeah. And, um, and so you'll, you'll hear Charlie's influence on the guitar. It's very 80s-ish. 80s it is. It is. And style hair blues because <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that term. Of which none of us have. <laughs> hair blues. Beg your pardon? I have a mane. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. We're all learning something today. So it's not very difficult to collaborate. Well, it might be a little more difficult the camera. now. With these guys now living in Cheyenne, it might be a little more difficult. Yeah. We haven't really worked out but, the, the details of that. But. You know, quite honestly, in my experience with music, you either can make music with a group of people or you can't. And we have a good um, relationship making music. We tend to be able to make music together. And it's because we, we're thinking about the same kind of thing, what we want to do and how we want to sound and what we know the guitar is going to be put into it and what, you know, certain sounds that we know that we put out. Um, so we're able to make it ours, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a blues song or a rock song or a, a country song or f funk song for that matter. It's a gun shy song. I was talking to Rachel earlier about what artists inspired her, and you were saying Nina Simone, Jimi Hendrix, uh, uh, Led Zeppelin, Janis Joplin. Uh, how about for you, for you guys? Well, like I said, I mean, I you know, the, the, the first, I, I started playing guitar because of the Beatles primarily, you know, and Elvis, you know. I mean, I remember the, one of the first things I did as a kid was uh, we put on a play and I was Elvis, and I was like nine or something like that. And so, you know, I, I just I just love any kind of music. It's it doesn't matter to me as long as it's good. Um, you know, I'm not hooked into any genre, genre or anything. If, if it's good music, I like it. And I'll, and I'll gravitate towards playing that kind of stuff in, in covers, you know. That's, that's important to me. And, you know, music is, I, I've just I've played music my whole life, and it's, it's just part of me. It's kind of like my dog. You know, it's, uh, it's my best friend. It's my companion. And, you know, it's, I just enjoy doing it. So. Well, and we also talked a lot about how music for you guys is very fluid. You guys are okay with, you know, incorporating these other genres and just kind of mixing it up and switching it up every time you go to a different venue. Um, it, so what can you say to speak to that? 
I don't really have a genre. I started playing guitar because I was when I was a kid, around 11 years old, my mother used to punish me every day. So she's punished me for two weeks. <laughs> I needed something to do. So, I, it was, so I'd play guitar. She used to stack months and months. I needed something to do. So I never listened to the radio. I don't know who was hot, who was not. And I just played guitar. That's all I did. So as far as genre, I don't know. Let them pick it. I, I, we have, she, everyone brings their ideas to whatever songs from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And I just play it how I hear it. So there is no genre for me. If you, it's your job to define it, not me. There was no one that didn't know who Stevie Ray Vaughan was. And so him going, yeah, I don't know that song. That's a great guitar. Whoever that is, I'm like, are you kidding me? That's Stevie Ray Vaughan. Of course it's great. You know, but, but you know, so it's kind of broadening his knowledge of music too, because he was kind of in a box of what he had played and learned to play and, you know, knew. And so uh, getting with the, this band, he's kind of gotten to know some music that he didn't really know was out there either. A whole lot of fun with this band. Learning a bunch, learning everything, every day. I can't imagine there's ever a dull moment when you guys are constantly just kind of switching it up, experimenting new stuff. Um, but do you collectively have a favorite song? In that, our that set? we do? Mm -hmm. I like the Zeppelin. Zeppelin. Medley. It's got to be the, it's gotta be the Zeppelin okay. medley. Okay. <laughs> Is that your least favorite? No. Oh. I, that one in Wayward Soul. Wayward Soul? Wayward Soul is, is one of our as originals long as that he can he wrote. start out and with the tempo right. Not <laughs> living in Buffalo a while back, but now you guys are kind of separated. So what are some main challenges you guys face with, you know, the distance and having to, you know, meet up halfway just to get somewhere and perform? No practice. No practice, no practice together. We haven't really dealt with it too much yet. Not yet. But the nice thing about it is nowadays there's technology out there that you can pre, it's, it'd be pretty much like Skype, but you can separate the audio and the video and uh, you could sit at home and actually practice with them there and us here. It's, so that's, that's one nice thing. I mean, I'm not a big, I'm not a big uh, putting lots of technology into the music like compression, but that is one area where that would be, you know, ideal for us right now. Yeah, and recording, recording's the same thing, you know, we can, you know, Scott usually puts the drum tracks in first, so that's something that he could do, and then, you know, send send that to, to Charlie, and, uh, you know, we just 
put our parts in and the CD that we put together uh, was produced by the band Charlie Charlie and I primarily but uh, uh, and that was fun we did that a couple of years ago it was a lot of work but uh, yeah, it wasn't really a, wasn't really a lot of work we didn't actually spend that much time on it or money no which is good no. that was the key because we didn't have any money really to spend on it but we knew we needed product to get out there to for people to take home with them. It came out fabulous. It came out. It did. It came out sounding like a, We're pleased. Sounding like an angel on Sunday. It just sings to you. It's a beautiful the songs are great. The vocals are great. The guitar, everything is great. The mix is great. It's a wonderful CD. <laughs> <laughs> salesman like a car salesman. No kidding. <laughs> so you guys have such great um, camaraderie together just in person and as a band since I've seen a little bit of your practicing. But um, what kind of hurdles besides, you know, this this move have you guys faced as a band in general? Well, you know, I think one of the things, there's not a lot of venues uh, around Buffalo. I mean, it's it's really seems to be more difficult these days to get gigs because you know there's just people aren't hiring bands for live performances uh, that much it seems like at least in in wyoming and in where we live in buffalo so there's only been a couple of venues that we've been able to play and the other thing is that um you know we're not country western and and that's the and big that's deal. What most I would say people, that was our, that's is our what biggest most hurdle. most people want to hear. And we're just, you know, I mean, we, we were like, oh, we've got to do a country western. So yeah. we, we, we put a couple into the set just because people want to hear them. But yeah, and you'll, it's you'll, not really You'll know deal. which ones they are because you'll see me back there. And my eyes will be glazed over like a donut. <laughs> Well, as far as moving forward goes, I mean, you guys are doing this interview down here. But in terms of, you know, trying to play in Denver or Fort Collins or Boulder or something. What are what are your future plans, if any, you know, with branching out and moving in that area? Because Denver, Colorado has got a great rock scene. So we are going to do that. We, uh, we I plan on we're going to go down there. We're going to play Denver. We're going to rock Denver, Boulder, Colorado. We're going to play Fort Collins. Is that just, just the distance? The fact that they moved away is, is not going to affect me at all. And, and not my psyche, at least not now. I don't know how many miles it is. I drove it last night in the dark by myself. It's about 300 miles. Uh, we're going to try to make it work. We're going to see how it goes. It's, you know, it may get tiring after a while, but it's, we got five years invested in this band. I ain't leaving. I not think, yet. I'm like herpes. I am not going away. <laughs> right? So I, I, there is no cure for me. that man. I think, the, I, think the, I think the thing about us is I know there's a big metal scene, which I really like. It's kind of refreshing to be where there's a metal scene because I like that kind of music. But I think with us, I think the thing you don't see is you don't see a lot of bands that are playing the 60s, 70s, 80s, early 90s. It's all, you're either, it seems to me from what I've seen, it's either country music or it's the younger metal scene and there's nothing in between. So I think we'll be able to fill our, you know, a nice little slot there for ourselves. Is there anything that you want to achieve in the next, say, two years from now with Gunshy? I think we're all pretty, <clears throat> um, Positive that we want to record more music. Yeah, we want, we want to, to get the other more, more originals. Scoot down to Denver a little bit. Yeah, definitely get down there and play in some of the spots that we haven't been able to get to just or because of. Or at the very least, try to like put some feelers out to you know at Fort Collins or Laramie, something like that. Maybe I don't know. I don't know what. I don't really haven't watched Denver too much, but Fort Collins it seems like it's kind of like I was saying, kind of the same way. You got the two the two camps and there's nothing in between. There's a great scene, a music scene down in, in Colorado, specifically northern Colorado. You know that. Uh, most people know that. And we know that we have to have a product to sell. And we've been selling this product for two years now. The, our, those six originals. That's what we had. We just wanted to get something done. Well, we have another six originals we could put on a CD. And it's time to put those new songs on, you know, and get that out there, too. It's, you know... If you don't move forward, you're going to be stagnant, and that's what we're trying to avoid, becoming stagnant.
becoming stagnant. We want to we want to go. We want to play. We want to be live and well, in your face. I think I mean that's it for us. We we like to play live. And that, and that's really what it's about. We'll leave them play in front of three people and two bartenders. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's just fun. I mean that's It's really not a bad deal to get paid to practice. If you know, if you're playing a gig and nobody shows up, you're still getting paid for it. What's something you want your audience to take away besides your album and besides, you know, having a great feeling in the pit of their stomach because they know they saw a great show? What else do you want people to take away with them when they leave? Good question. I just think that they, you know, that they had a good time and that they'd come back and listen to us again. And they do keep coming back. It's one thing I've noticed, I've seen the same faces come back over and over and over. Gun shy is not going to cure cancer, although we have done uh, cancer benefits before. Gun shy is not going to stop ISIS and we're not going to stop world hunger. <laughs> People come up to us, uh, they come to our shows and it's a little time away from the mortgage, All the wife, that. the car payments and the kids and, and that's what we do. Like that, that's what it is. So, so, so as tonight. It's a break from reality. We're gonna have, it's a beautiful, we're gonna have a beautiful show tonight. So you come, come into our spaceship, let us take you away. We will drop you off exactly where, where we left off. And, and you are gonna have a marvelous time and you will see what Gun Shy is all about. How you have safe had coffee today, you? <laughs> we are. Tonight's show is gonna be, it's gonna be marvelous. You're gonna hear the marvelous, most hottest, sexiest guitar licks. To unsuspect, un, Speak for yourself. Un, un, unsuspecting wow. listeners. Oh, all wow. the, yes, it's going to be a marvelous show. The thunderous drums, the bass is going to be great. Uh, this is what we yes, do. Yes, we do have a minimum. Bada, bada. This is we what do we have do. a minimum volume, though. That's, that's one problem we have. Minimum volume. It's going to be fabulous. And it's really loud. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for sitting thank down you. and talking with me. Um, and I wish you guys the best of luck. I hope you guys snap up some major venues in all over Colorado, really. But yeah, um, we will. Once again, it was awesome talking to you guys. Um, I really look forward to listening to your album when I get home. Um, did you get one? Did Rachel give you one? I, I do have one, yeah. Okay, I that's do. Gonna, that's going to be fun. You'll see what I'm well, talking about. Well, and we'd about. like to continue to play down here in Cheyenne. I mean, this is, this is a great venue. So. Yeah, I think this we're going to start here. And, and that's yeah. how we moved down south. Yeah, this is, this is really nice. So. Looking forward to tonight. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> Gunshy. No one that knows me knows how
Our exclusive interview with Rachel McCoy begins now. So this ain't the end, saw you again. As musicians, you see a lot, um, and you also convey a lot through your music, but uh, what kind of memorable stories do you have to tell uh, from your performances and maybe from, something from that's influenced your music? I, I guess I have to preempt this by saying that my husband tells me he's gonna buy me a shirt that says, I hurt me, because I tend to fall down a lot. And it's because I am going constantly 150 miles an hour, go. You know, as I get older, I tend to slow down a little more. I'm coming to realize that. But um, not even at a gig, many times Charlie would call me and say, hey, what are you doing? It's a Friday night. Let's go to the Century Club and, and sing for a while. And just an impromptu and take his, or let's go down to the Occidental and jam for a while. OK, let's do it. Well, there was one night that it was slick. I was wearing boots. I was wearing flat boots, actually, and I like my heels. And I was helping him carry his uh, stuff across the street, and I slipped. But not only did I slip, but my foot went up, the board that I had in my hand hit me in my face, gave me a black eye, broke two of my teeth, I found out later. <laughs> yes, so these are things, and that wasn't even at a gig. <laughs> But it's, it's all kind of gigs. When you're playing in a band and you're going out live in front of people, you have to remember that you're, you know, we do it because it's fun to do it, but they're paying attention. They are paying attention. So, and, and the cool thing, and, and Charlie can attest to that, he's like, I didn't even know you were hurt. You just came in, set up, and said, no, I'm fine, let's just do this. And sang your butt off, I'm like, yeah, because I was hurt, and I'm like, let's just go. <laughs> so, you know, you, you take the hits and you go with them. You have to sometimes, you know how they say, roll with it. Show's got to go on, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Can you tell us an amazing story associated with Gunshy? I think Gunshy in itself is an amazing story because we're a rock and roll band that are still playing and having a great time doing it in Wyoming, <laughs> where rock and roll is not the predominant um, musical choice of most of the people that live here. Our evolution is pretty amazing. We, the band that is gun shy today is not always the band that's been gun shy. We had a different bass player when we started and which is why I say that's the hardest position to fill because um, first of all there aren't many of them out there available. Second of all my uh, like I told you earlier my favorite qu quote is that a band is a dysfunctional family of your choosing. And you, didn't, you weren't born with them, so you can't just deal with them. But you chose to be with these folks. But sometimes it doesn't always mesh. Things don't always work out. And so um, the first bass player didn't work out. And there you go, roll with it. And we, we came across Paul simply. He was having lunch in a place, I think, that I went in to have lunch in Buffalo. And we just got to talking. And, that's what worked, and it's amazing that it did in a town of 5,000 people that a second bass player was available. <laughs> That's what we were thinking. We were going to have to put an ad in, in Wyoming musicians or something looking for a bass player. But Okay, and, and where do you see Gunshy progressing in two years from now, five years from now? I don't know. I, I was just talking to you earlier and telling you that we were at a at kind of a crossroads. Um, We've done some cool stuff, and you know, we have a CD under our belt. It's got six songs on it, but they're all original songs. They're all ours, and we love the idea of writing original music and recording it and putting music out there. Um, we also, I, speaking personally for myself, love the idea of being able to travel and going down maybe to Colorado and playing the rock scene there is so much bigger than it is here and playing live a lot more. I'd love to get into being a house band somewhere where we could just play once a month in the same place and people could come and see us and they knew we'd be there so they could come see us. Um, and then, you know, traveling when we're not playing as a house band. We want to record more music. Um, and last time we, we did it as cost effective as we could. I think every band does that. Um, but our right now, the crossroads is that uh, Scott and myself have moved to Cheyenne. I took a new job. And Charlie and Paul are still in Buffalo. 
So for a long time, we've been talking about the possibility of going to Denver and playing in clubs in Denver, of going you know, down to Colorado to play because of the scene, the music scene there. And we would say, well, if we did that, they'd have to put us up in a hotel. We'd have to have two nights and make, in order to make it worth it going. And now that Scott and I are here in Cheyenne, Denver's an hour and a half drive. That's really not too bad, and we've done that. So, you know, they could stay at our house, um, that we have extra room, that cuts out the, the needing a room. It just makes the possibilities so much more um, real. You know, it's like, oh, those, that's really an option now where we don't have the, the uh, well, it's a five and a half hour drive, and that, that's out of, the, out of the window now. You can come down, stay at the house, we'll drive down together, we'll, you know. So we're all very interested in making that happen. And with this interview happening and us playing here, we all kind of decided, okay, let's go. Let's, let's move on it. Uh, let's make a decision. We're either going to go or we're going to be stagnant and we're not going to do anything. And we don't want to be stagnant. So here we are, moving forward, moving ahead, um, full steam. Choo-choo. So what was your driving inspiration to start a band? Well, it wasn't really my driving inspiration. Uh, my mother sang to us as children. That's uh, love and music are kind of synonymous for me. And uh, my mother just put that love of music and I always thought that everybody could sing really um, and got a lesson in tone deafness when I started going to karaoke with my mother and realized that not everybody could do what I could do and wow maybe I have something pretty special and uh, but still I was not looking for a band until the guy came into the bar where I was bartending and they had karaoke. And when it was a slow night, I would sing. And so it got to where people would request that I sing and I got to be nicknamed the singing bartender. So it was a lot of fun. Well, a guy came in to see one of the gals that came to karaoke and my mother happened to be at the bar that night and told him, if you want to see a gal sing for a band, you need to listen to her. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't front a band. I'm not, well, he talked me into it, and that's where, um, long story short, whatever blues band started. So um, it wasn't so much my drive that started it, but boy, I tell you, once I started doing it, I was like, whoa, this is my thing. This is cool. This is my thing. I want to sing for people for a living for the rest of my life. Um, and I started writing songs something else I didn't know I could do. But the music, it was there. I, I could hear it, it was in me, you know? So I just thought, well, what the heck, I'm gonna try to write it down. And blues songs are what came to me. They come to me very easily. Um, one of the songs on our CD is a rock song that I wrote, and it's the first rock song I ever wrote. I was like, wow, wow, I think I wrote a rock song. I gotta call the guys up. Guys, you gotta listen to this. I think it's my first rock song. So, you know, um, I didn't necessarily have the drive to begin with, but it grew in me like a fire, that's for sure. Okay, and you talked a lot about Led Zeppelin having influence on your music. So what part, what is it about his music that <sighs> speaks to you? The drive, the driving rhythm and feeling that you get. Every time I think of Led Zeppelin, the first thing I think of is da-da-da, 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 and it just makes me want to whip my hair around and feel it in my soul. It's like a passion. You, I don't think you have to always understand exactly what that word was if you're feeling it and it works. You know, so, um, and then, my God, his voice. You know, you can't, you, you gotta give props to his voice. Led Zeppelin just was the all around rock band for me. Um, Janis Joplin is, probably a hero of mine in that she didn't have the best voice in the world, but she wailed and she didn't care that she, her, uh, maybe her pitch wasn't always right or she was faster or slower than what um, the tempo was because she sang with feeling and soul and passion. Janis Joplin, is a big influence on me because of the way she felt the music, because how she wrote songs and she sang songs that people knew were from her. She 
didn't make the best choices in life, and that's why she's no longer with us. But she sure did make a big impact on the music business and the music industry, and um, specifically women in rock music and blues music. Because before that, you know, we had a lot of blues singers um, that were women, but they were blues wasn't really considered what rock and roll was considered. You know, it wasn't really on the same. Um, same, it wasn't in the same place. Um, so she was one of the, the big people that came, that brought rock and roll and blues together in her music. Um, but we also play, when we play for crowds that aren't necessarily all rock and roll fans, but like our music because we mix it up so much, we uh, try to play a few songs, throw a few covers in there that make them feel a little more comfortable. And they tend to like to swing dance. What I'm finding out is if we play something that they can swing to, they will. So we threw a couple songs in, a couple country songs, um, Wagon Wheel and Sweet Home Alabama, the quintessential country song, Sweet Home Alabama. Everybody loves that when they sing along with us. Um, and we don't always play those songs. But if we have a crowd that we think we'll, we'll like them, we'll dance to them, we'll play them, we'll throw them in there. So I write my set list to go with every gig. Um, every time we do it, we play a different set list because, I mean, we play the same music, but we mix it up and we make it a little different because I know they're not going to remember that we played it exactly that way the last time they saw us play, but I remember it, and the guys remember it, and it's nice to have some mix-up, and you know, it keeps them on their toes too because they know they got to keep practicing. <laughs> so yeah, we try to throw a lot of different genres into the music that we play just because there's so many that people like. You know, there, there's a lot of options out there, and we play music from the 70s up to the 2000s, so that gives us a lot of options to choose from and a lot of different genres to try to blend in there. So this kind of runs in the same lines of stage performance. You guys vary it up per venue, per performance a little bit. So we just kind of tell me a little bit about that? Well, sometimes we don't have a choice. Um, the place we're playing tonight is huge. We don't always have a venue so big. Um, the place we play on a regular basis back in Buffalo is um, a s small little hole in the wall, if you, if you would. Um, but we always fill the place up. We've got a lot of fans that come to that particular bar to see us. So we know that we're going to have a good night when we play there. Um, but I don't want to do the same thing all the time. And when you have a, a room that only lets you fit um, in about a 12 by 12 inch square space, you tend to not be as wild and crazy and belligerent as I can get um, in a smaller space. You, you play for your crowd and it's a two-way street. They, they're excited, they get what they're trying to get from you for having a good show, and you're getting what you need to get from them for performing a good show for them. Okay, and here's my last question. When you perform, every, every performance is a little bit different, but what is the thing you want your audience to walk away with after watching you all perform? I want them to have a good time. I want them to go, wow, those guys are really fun. They're entertaining. They're energetic. I had a really good time. That's what I want them to go away with. Um, I want them to take a CD home with them, obviously, you know. Um, and I want them to come back. But when they leave, there's nothing worse than going and seeing a live band, especially a live band that you've heard that's good, and then being let down and feeling like, you know, personally, I don't stay. If I'm not enjoying the band, if I'm not having a good time, I don't stay. And a lot of people do that. So my goal, our goal as a band, is to entertain the crowd and keep them there. And when they leave, they know they're coming back to see a gun shy show again when we're back around. Right, right on. Well, thank you so much for sharing yeah. all this with me. Thanks for having me. Right, no problem. So I'm done.